Yes, we've made it. It's 2020. Thank you everyone who has been recently subscribing to the channel. It's super exciting and I'm looking forward to what 2020 may bring for the Media Workbench channel. But for now, let's create something really cool. Let's create this super hypnotic, gradiented stroke lines without too much keyframing. In fact, there's only two properties that we need to keyframe in order to make this animation happen. So let's jump right on into it, learning this new motion design technique. So we're here in a brand new After Effects project and we're going to create a new composition. It's going to be 1920 by 1080, 25 frames per second and we'll go for say 30 seconds. So I've created it here and firstly I want to type my text out for the big 2020. Can you believe it? So I have picked the Montserrat font here and it's the extra bold. You can get this from the font Google specimen Montserrat. Download it from there. Now here we're going to select our layer, right click and select create shapes from text. We're going to boop that. It's going to hide our text layer and create a new shape layer called 2020 outlines. You can see here it's filled it. But what we want to do is just have a stroke. So we're going to click on the fill options at the top here. We're going to then click this one here, which says none. Then we'll click on the stroke. We're going to make a solid. We're going to make it white for now. And we'll make it a thickness like four, like so. And we can hide these safe titles. You can see there it is there. Now selecting our layer down the bottom, we're going to click the little arrow. It's going to show us contents and transform. We want contents and we want to click over on the ad where this little arrow is and select trim paths. Trim paths applies to everything above it. And so we're going to find ourselves some space here. Go to the one second mark. We're going to set a keyframe for both the zero and the 100 at one second. Drag it forward to three seconds. And we're going to set another keyframe. Now at the start, we want both keyframes to be at 0%, both the start and the end. And at the end, we want both to be at 100. Now we're going to select all of that and hit F9. We're going to now apply some easing. If you're unfamiliar with what easing exactly is, you can check out my tutorial on all things to do with easing here. Otherwise, we're going to jump into our graph editor and we're just going to manipulate this graph. So I'm dragging over the points at the bottom. You'll see it gives us these little yellow handles and these are what I'm going to be manipulating. So I'm going to click on it, hold shift just to drag it forward like so. And then same with the end. And because it's one second at the start, one second at the end and a second either in between, you can see the two second mark actually lines up with the very middle of our animation. And so we know that when we've got a nice peak here, we've lined up our easing to be nice and smooth across our animation. Now we're going to select our start keyframes and drag them forward a little bit. So now if we preview that, this is what we've got so far, which is super cool already. You can see it draws out our 2020 text like so. Now we're going to select our layer and we're going to go to our effects, go down to time and select CC force motion blur, dragging that onto our shape layer. You can see it applies like so. And this is where we get these really cool gradiented strokes. There's a lot of different ways to do gradient strokes. And I found that this one's probably the simplest because it only requires one effect to get the really cool look. You're not trying to keyframe a whole heap of stuff. In fact, the only keyframes you have is for the actual motion itself. So super handy. What we're going to do is bump our motion blur samples up to 40 and then we're going to up our shutter angle a whole lot. Let's go to 3500 like so and you can see it's really brought out that like so. If you find on your animation you're starting to get a little bit of this sort of bumpy gradients, that's because your sample size is too low. You can bump it up a little bit more and that'll smooth all that out. So here we go. This is now looking very nice. If we preview that again, you could see now it's got this nice gradient as it fades into that movement and nice gradient at the end. 
But if you remember in our animation we showed at the start, our very first line that comes in doesn't fade in. In fact, it just starts like a solid line and then fades out. So in order to do that effect, we're going to have to take our layer here and hit Control D to duplicate. We're there now selecting that layer. We're going to turn off the effect. And then in the track mat for the layer underneath it, we're going to select alpha mat. And you'll see there it's really cut it down, the animation. And you can see it starts with this solid edge and then goes forward with this really cool sort of faded out sort of look. So if you were wanting to do like motion lines and stuff in your sort of animations, this is the way to do it. You just draw out lines as a shape layer, do this effect with a force motion blur and then apply this alpha mat on it. But for us, we're not stopping here. We're going to then add some extra colors in there. So we're going to take the layer and duplicate it again. We'll turn this one on, turn the force motion blur on so we get it back. And then we're going to go to the stroke color and select a different color. Let's go for this sort of canary yellow. Now we'll drag this layer forward and that's where we start to actually reveal our original animation and you can see it fades into our other animation like so so we can drag it forward and that'll kind of influence how long between one and the other like so you can see it's now added in a bit more and we could even duplicate this again drag it forward and let's do a different color again let's do a pinky color like so so now if we go forward we just preview that we're going to really see the combination of those different colors as it transitions between those different layers that it's then revealing. So you can see we've got this white, we then have this yellow, this pink starts coming in and it's going to look super cool. You see it fades out like so. Now, what if I wanted to make the start sort of really cool and glowing? You'll remember that. So what I'll do is I'm going to go back to our bottom layer, our shape layer, for the white color, duplicate that again, turn off the alpha track mat because it's going to start trying to interact with other ones and I'm going to drag it all the way to the top. Now for this point, we're just going to work on just this layer. We don't want to see everything else. So I'm going to select this little circle here and that's just going to preview the layer we're working on. Now if I select down here to our contents, to trim paths, you'll see I'm going to our controls for our trim paths keyframes. I'm just going to select the start ones and drag it forward quite a bit like so. So they're really close to each other. Then I'm going to go up to the force motion blur and set the shutter angle to something more like 200. So now we've got little itty bitty bloops. <laughs> bloops. Now in our effects, let's go to blur. And we're going to select the fast blur, apply it to that layer and drag it out a little bit. And that's just going to make it have some little blooms like so. And then to our blending mode here, I'm going to select add. Now, if I unpreview that, you can see now I'm getting these really cool sort of lights right at the tips of my little lines that are animating in, but they're not too bright. So I'm going to go over and select curves and we're just going to brighten them up a bit by selecting instead of a, a red, green or blue channel, selecting the alpha channel like so and just dragging that line up like so. You can see it starts really popping and if I drag it like so whoop, and get a nice S curve, it's going to make it a lot more contrasty is super cool. Maybe it's a bit much and we can also play with our blur. Maybe blow it out a little bit. Oh no, too much. Let's go for like a 15. So you can see there it's a little bit of blur and if we want this blur to be longer all we need to do is go back to our trim paths and make that animation a little bit longer like so. So now if we go back and we're just going to preview how that looks, you'll see we start off with not just the white, but those little bulgy bright lights as the animation comes in and it's going to follow that line around as those animations happen like so and reveal everything else. And we don't need to even just stop here. We can even duplicate this pink one more time and maybe we'll add in a blue right at the end just to kind of cap everything off. So we'll go change the stroke to like a bluey color, hit okay. 
and then again we can duplicate this turn the effect off and also turn the alpha mat on for the one underneath and that's going to let the hard line be at the start and then after that fade out so if we wait and preview all of that you can see what the effect is of everything all together which is this super cool multicolored stroked line thing you can see we haven't had to do much keyframing it's only taken one effect to do so it's super easy to do and we can do this with any sort of shape layer we can do it with basic geometric shapes like circles or squares or lines just to add emphasis we can do even do it with more elaborate things like icons or stuff in your infographic information or typography just like this so you can see there's a number of different applications for it and we have a number of different ways we can do it with both blurring in and fading in from the start and end or having that hard straight line at the start. So you can see there's the effect right there thrown it all together and look it hasn't taken much time at all to throw together. So there we have our gradient stroked lines in After Effects. If you have any additional questions, comments, other thoughts of how you can apply this go ahead and leave them in the comments section down below. Until next time, my name is Bench. Thanks for watching.